What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, it's time to check in on a game that I found to be really, really intriguing the last time we played it. Uh, this game is called Spire of Sorcery and we played it about seven months ago. Since then, the game has released into early access. What we played back then was basically a Steam Festival demo. And they've done a full restructuring of the game and how it functions and the way that the iconography and the way that the tooltips are displayed. There's been a whole bunch of changes. And I was waiting for that, because while I found that the premise of the game was cool, and the combat system was interesting, and the general accoutrement that they had sort of installed in the game was really, really appealing, there was still some rough edges around it, so I wasn't sure if I wanted to cover it when it first went into early access. Now that they've done, like, the restructuring of the early game, and they've got the first couple chapters on in, this game is in early access, but I did want to check it out and actually do, like, a full comprehensive sort of preview of the game, and take a look at what it has on offer. If you've never seen Spire of Sorcery before, this is a RPG that takes place in an open world, a little bit of a roguelike mechanic as well, because when you die it's all over with, where you are a team of mages trying to find your way to a sentient tower so that you can help it enact its works and save the world from an impending apocalypse. Along the way you're going to be hunted by the Inquisition, they do not want that to happen, they do not like the Spire, and so anyways, the game's got a lot of interesting little mechanics and cool little things going on that remind me of old board games from like the 70s, where they kind of just went all in like they didn't know what was a good idea or what was like a bad idea and they just kind of like threw it together and they hoped that you liked it like I don't know if you ever played a game called like Magic Realm or any of that kind of stuff but this is an odd game I'm under no pretenses that it's going to be for everybody but I do think that the game is for me and I've enjoyed the time that I've spent with it so far so without further ado let's dive on in if after watching this game you wanted to get it for yourself I'll have a link for you down below in the description so you can check that on out on top of that, you will also be able to find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live on any given day of the week. So here we are. We get to pick from randomly generated characters. Every single character will have a different appearance. They'll have different stats. They'll have different goals and things that they want to accomplish over the course of the playthrough. They will have different traits. They will have positive and negative boosts and things of that, na uh, things of that regard. Uh, as of right now, what you really need to pay attention to, though, is, like, all these numbers up here are basically their resist to various things. So, like, they have a courage value, they have an immune system, they have resistance to poisons, they have concentration, they have health. Uh, it basically determines how much of a certain damage type they can take from magic spells or attacks or, like, effects before they go down and they take, like, a permanent wound effectively. So, for example, this guy right here has fantastic concentration which makes this guy really really good for stocking up spells because every time you use a spell effect or like a spell component or reagent it takes concentration whereas this guy has very bad health so like realistically we don't want this guy to be targeted in combat because he's going to go down reasonably quickly this guy has amazing concentration in health but he's not so good against like poisons he's not so courageous and so like fear spells and things like corrosive acids and whatnot are going to be his weakness down here at the bottom, it looks like we've got cleansing on this guy, so it gets all temporal tokens removed. Okay, tokens unrelated to stats. Don't exactly know what that means. We have slow down over here. It has one move point a day less when traveling, but it doesn't stack. This guy is going to affect people's moods, unfortunately, so, like, they lose a mood per day because he's just, like, a grumpy Gus. We could go for something like this right here where he auto-retreats after three rounds. That might make things kind of interesting. And then this guy over here, let's kind of, like, re-roll this a little bit more and see what we get. Doesn't experience any effects for morale boosts and encounters. That's okay. And it looks like you've got a bonus, like a surge of power. Duplicates the next token issued by the number here. We'll have to play around with that one to figure out what it does. But anyways, this guy is easy to poison. He takes double poison damage. This guy gets double restoratives from poison when he uses like a poison cure potion. This guy apparently is immune to propagation effects of disease tokens, which is really, really good. This guy doesn't care about ailments. So ailments are a thing that you get when you max out this meter right here. Basically, you'll like lose a chunk and it'll start over from the beginning, but you'll get like a permanent ailment that has to do with like you being fearful or like you being healthy or whatever else. We don't have a lot of HP in this party, but I think we'll be all right. This guy is motivated by power and knowledge. This guy is motivated by justice and mercy. And then this guy is motivated by revenge. Okay, sounds good. Let's go ahead and dive straight on in. The call of the spire drives the mages towards the wild lands. 
The Inquisition is on alert, deploying agents to pursue the runaways. Yeah, so this beginning portion of the game is brand new. It took me a minute to wrap my head around it. But basically, we are on the run from the Inquisition from the start of the game. And it doesn't imply this very well, but you're supposed to be going to the right, effectively. There's a bridge over here that takes you to the Wildlands. You can also lose the Inquisition by hiding in the forest. And so, like, if I come over to here and then I juke back into the forest, we should be able to give them the slip a little bit. They shouldn't attack us unless they're on the same tile as us. And so I'm going to kind of like dip down into this forest right here, and then we'll pass our turn. Our number of movement points are up above our head right there. It looks like there's just some free disembodied meat laying around underneath over here. I'm going to kind of wait for them to move around a little bit more, and in fact, they did not move around a little bit more. So we're just going to have to take our chances over here. We'll probably have to fight this guy before he pulls on up. We'll go through the UI in just a minute. But basically, this is the pursuant. Like, this is basically the progress of the season that you're in. During different seasons, different magical effects will be stronger or weaker. Or different things will be occurring. We've got our cooking pot right here where we can make things. We've got our alchemy cauldron right here where we can cook up different potions and restoratives. We've got our discovery book, which allows us to dive into the stats of some of the enemies that are going to be around. Uh, actually, it looks like they didn't catch us, so that's actually good. We sort of want to give these guys the slip. Over here, we've got to get through this guy right here that's guarding the bridge before we can go any further. Hopefully, we don't get blocked off too sharply. Okay, so that guy came in and attacked us right there. That's okay, and this is the combat system. So the combat system has been revised since the last time we played the game. The last time we played the game, oh, he lit me on fire? How dare you? Oh, they got first turn since they were initiating the attack. Yikes, okay, so they chewed on my man right here pretty hard. I do think the beginning of the game is a little bit too difficult. I think there are way too many Inquisitor groups at the beginning of the game for a new player. I think they should ease back on that. As of yet, I've never made it to the bridge without taking multiple fights. There just doesn't seem to be any way to do it, so you're usually beat up pretty good by the time you get to the first bridge. I think they could cut the number of Inquisitors down by about half. And like, this is the first five minutes of the game, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people out there that, like, you play the tutorial before you play this part, and it doesn't give you a whole lot of guidance here at the beginning, and I think it could be just a little bit smoother. I don't think the game should really hit you with the full breadth of, like, nastiness until you get across the bridge, basically, uh, so that you can get into the Wildlands reasonably fresh, because the Wildlands are tough. There's a lot of nastiness out there. So all you really need to know about this combat system is when you mouse over an enemy, it tells you their resistances. Basically, you have to have that many status effects of that many types on them to kill them. So he needs two fear effects, one wound, one ice, or one fire, and he will die. Whereas this guy is resistant to ice. I need to check my spell book real fast and see what I have. So my leftmost mage, let's go ahead and we've got a little bit of this and that. We don't really have any spells lined up right now, which kind of sucks. We do have a frost spell, so I'll go ahead and start the cast on ice. Every single time your character starts a turn, they're going to get dice. These dice have different faces. You basically just match the dice to the face that it needs, and then the spell will go off. An important mechanic you need to understand, though, is the fatigue system, which is this bottom number right here. Every single time you apply a die in here, you're going to move up this fatigue track. So the first allocation is free. The next thing that we do is going to cost us one of these chaos tokens. And if we max this out, we get mana burn, basically, uh, where the character just, its he's channeled too much energy. Let's go ahead and we'll put some ice on this guy right here. Ice him. And we'll get rid of him real fast. Love the spell effects, although I do think that they could very much punch up the sound effects to a greater deal for the cast. I talked about that when we played the demo. I like the spell effects very, very much, but like the... The, the, the spell the spell sound effects could definitely be kind of like punched up a couple decibels and given a little bit more of a plosive crackly quality uh, just to make them feel like you're actually casting some powerful, you know, mage shotgun or whatever. I think we don't have anything else to play with right now. I'm going to recycle his die. He didn't get anything, unfortunately, that we can play around with. I can go fishing for fire magic. And in fact, we went fishing for fire magic and we came out on top. Let's go ahead and crispify this guy right here. Depending on the element that you kill an enemy with, they will drop different loot. So there is kind of an elemental interaction here. So certain enemies will only drop loot if you scare them away. Some enemies will only drop loot if you light them on fire. 
Some enemies will only drop loot if you dispel them, and even though there may be four or five ways to kill an enemy, there may be only one or two ways to actually get loot out of that enemy that you can turn into potions, or you can turn into food, or like equipment that you could put onto your mages to make them stronger and give them more resistances, so on and so forth. It's all things that you want to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get a touch of ice spell going over here. And we're going to put one die in right there. We didn't get what I wanted, unfortunately. He's got plenty of fatigue to burn, though. So I think I can kind of reroll his aggressively. And unfortunately, we didn't get anything right there. I'm going to reroll yours aggressively. Say, so I should have gone with fire. If I had gone with fire, we get the cast off right now. Bummer. All right, well, we'll just bypass our turn. These tokens will all go away on the next turn. I was trying to save my center guy from taking more damage from this idiot right here. Okay, I'll take that. That's fine. I don't hate it. Reroll your dice real fast. We did get the ice that we wanted, so there it is. And down goes that enemy right there. We should be victorious. So there's our first big W. Uh, we got some ashes. We actually converted that guy into ashes and can now use that as a spell reagent. People are hungry, so I'm going to go ahead and feed them real fast with some of this hardtack. There we go. You just drag and drop over to there. Unfortunately, we took a morale penalty because they didn't want to eat hardtack. I get it. I've had hardtack. Back when I was doing, like, when I was in, like, elementary school, we did, like, a section on the explorers, basically. And in doing the section on the explorers, uh, we ate hardtack. Our teacher made hardtack and brought it on in so that we could see, like, you know, what, uh... God, Sir Fa Francis Drake or any of those guys were eating when they were on the road. Not a lot of great reagents here. If I had another triangle, we'd have a damage cast. Let's go ahead and get the damage cast up and running for the Skyhammer. Which, by the way, is a resoundingly dope name for a spell. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll apply one right there. Just to sort of see what we get out. All fire. I mean, that kind of works. I don't hate it. We'll go ahead and put fire on this guy right here, I guess. We'll start right to there. We'll start left to right, I suppose. I think I can get another cast off. But it's going to get expensive. Yeah, it's going to get pricey. But that guy's now dead, so I mean, that's one less damage that's going to be going out. And then we can wait and see if we get another triangle over here for like an instant one-shot. We've got enough reagents right here for us to cast an ice spell on one of these guys. None of them are particularly weak to ice, but I'll take it. So he's charging up an attack. He is also charging up an attack. Okay, I may have gone a little hard in the paint here. I'm not in love with my options. Let's re-roll you real quick just to see what you get out. You did get a triangle, which is great. We'll take the triangle and we will one-shot that guy with the sky hammer. There you go. I don't know why it's so fun to say sky hammer, but it just is the sky hammer. All right. We don't really have the bits and pieces that we need. And we're kind of, kind of maxed out. If I can get one more Icy Boy, we can cast an Ice Spell. I'll put Ice on him. We didn't draw another Ice card, though, which is kind of a bummer. No ice from over there either. So we're going to have to make some tough decisions here. Somebody's about to get hit, and they may actually die. Uh, because this attack right here, it does three of these little slashy damages. I can pre-prep an ice spell right here. I don't particularly want to. I was hoping that we'd draw another ice right there so that I could just instantly complete it and nuke this guy, and then we could get across the bridge and rest. But unfortunately, no such luck. There's our ice right there. 
That's going to put him into chaos burn territory, though. So I think we just got to wait it out. Nah, let's take the chaos burn. Why not? All right, so their stat was filled in by chaos tokens. It gave them chaos burn. That's fine. Like, I'll take the chaos burn for right now. We just need this guy to die because I have, like, this feeling that if we allow him to finish that, he's going to attack this guy. He's going to do three damage and kill him. So I was, like, trying to get that sorted out before it became a major issue. Now we need to hustle across the bridge. This bridge is the only way to cross into the wildlands. The river runs deep and fast here, and its waters are ice cold as they come from the melting glacier. Yeah, let's just get as much of a gap in between us and them as we possibly can. We, we don't really want to take more fights here. It is now the Phantom Moon. This season is the season of those who belong to the Realm of Chaos. It is followed by the season of the Broken Moon. Okay. The bridge is gone. What was that? The Inquisition cannot reach you now. We are glad that you have made it this far. We? Who are you? We are the Spire. It was our call that you followed, and we thank you. We hurt, and we need your help. But this can wait a little. Well, we're happy to help. There's no need to wait if we can survive in these friendly lands, that is. You will survive, and you must. Follow east. We have sent you supplies. Once you have collected those, we will provide further instructions. So there you go. We've got to make it over to whatever this weird obelisk thing is, and we have our first quest that we've been bequeathed. You can check out this signpost. In block letters, the signpost reads, You are now in the wild lands. The laws of the Empire no longer apply here. If you value your life, turn back now. Someone has crossed out your and added my. There's also a scrawl that says, Soldier Muga can't get it up. Well, that's unfortunate for Soldier Muga, but I don't think that affects me at all. How are we looking on stats right now? Is everybody feeling a little bit better? I was going to say, like, this stuff should diminish with time, I think. Oh, we've got gear. Hold on, what is that right there? Traveler's clothes. We don't really have any idea what they do for stats. But it does change the portrait, which I like very much. That's pretty cool. Like, even if it does nothing, I like that we can differentiate in between our different characters now. Cool. Morale's a little bit bad. It could be better. I think we are going to have to figure out a way to heal ourselves before too long because this guy is just a giant liability right now. All right, well, let's go pick up this husk of roast beast over here or whatever it is. This Dr. Seuss-like hunk of meat. And then we'll just kind of continue our travels. How's our stomach doing right now? We're not hungry yet, so that's good. I have two of these, so I can cook it into a meal. So I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll just throw that into the pot. There we go. So that's got our meter filled up a little bit better. Some survival elements to the game as well when it comes to, like, foraging and figuring out what stuff is. A distressed villager? Yeah, we can go talk to him. I guess. Hopefully this doesn't... I'm too benevolent. That's my problem, is I have too much empathy when I play games like this. The old man stands in the middle of a clearing. His clothing is charred. His mouth is open. It looks like he's talking, but no sound escapes. He is in a state of shock. Help! She burned everyone! Slow down. What happened? The girl! We knew she was corrupted, and her father begged us not to banish her, and now she burned the whole village! He walks away, confused, shaking his head and talking to himself in between sobs. Okay. Oh, I do like that slight angularity of the map when you zoom in and out. There's a flower over here. Maybe we take a brief detour to maybe grab that. What is that creature right there? Uh-oh. There's a, there's a critter over here. It appears to be somewhat aware of me, too. Is it tough? I don't know how hard it is. Oh, we found... We've learned about rainstorms, which apparently we had... No idea what a rainstorm was before this very moment. I'm going to get a little bit of a gap, and we'll see if he follows us. I don't know exactly what I just picked up. It looks like if we have a mushroom and a cheer blossom, we can make something, but we don't know what it is just yet. Probably a curative of some kind. The body on the ground has been smashed into a wall. Its limbs are folded at an unnatural angle. In some places, they are charred to the bone. This death must have been painful, though probably quick. Oh yeah, there's the girl right there. Well, we are trained mages, so maybe we can help. Hunched over, a young girl sits in the middle of a crater, sobbing. The skin on one of her arms is purple. It's a mark of chaos. The young girl looks scared, and it takes a while to calm her down enough to have a conversation. 
She was born in the Empire, suspecting that she possessed magic powers, her parents moved to the Wildland to protect her against the Inquisition. As she got older, the power grew stronger, but without anybody to teach her to control it, a tragedy was bound to happen. I didn't want this to happen, my father and my mother, I just want to close my eyes and make this go away. Yeah, take her in. Hell yeah, dude, I'll take another mage. Sweet, dude. We welcome her as a new mem- That's what I figured, is like, we are guild-trained mages. Like, we are professional mages. Like, who better to teach her how to control her power than us? You know what I mean? Like, it appears as though the corruption has kind of taken her. And I don't know the lore of the universe. Like, this might backfire on me. But, like, if it's kind of like you find, like, a small kid and you're a Jedi, and the small kid keeps destroying stuff with his powers. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to teach him how to use the Force properly, or are you just going to wait for him to become, like, a brigand, a bandit, or a Sith? You know, like, you've got to act. I do want to say just briefly that I absolutely adore the art style of this game. The thick ink lines and the UI, very, very well done. I like it a lot. This game has, like, an intoxicating UI. I enjoy it very, very much. It can sometimes be hard to, like, figure out what some things are, like, in the character sheets or whatever, but, man, does it look good while it's busy being confusing. So do you guys heal at all? I don't think that they do. I think we're going to need potions or something in order to fix them. I don't know if I can travel this way. Yeah, it looks like that's a dead end right there, but I'm glad we got a free mage. It's probably going to up our food usage, though, so we should probably figure out some way to resupply before too long. I do wish that I had, like, an on-screen meter right now, so our sustenance is 57. I do wish that this meter existed somewhere on screen. They do have a little bit of space here where it looks like you could connect, like, meters right there or something. Just like, I don't know, there's a couple different places in the screen real estate where I'd like to be able to know... Uh, what my food situation is without having to open up a menu. You guys know me, when it comes to UI design, I tend to... Pr I'm gonna fight this thing. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna fight it. It looks like it takes wounds and dies instantly. Or... It looks like we can scare it away. What do I have to that effect? So triangle, triangle, swirly. Oh, nope, that's not what I wanted. You can right-click on just about anything in this game, and it will give you some kind of... It will give you some form of information on what it is you're trying to do. A shield would be a good idea. So I'm going to have him line up a shield real fast. Over here, I do have weakened will, and we can cast it right now. So let's get rid of one of them right this second. There you go. So we scared that one off. We don't get any loot out of it, which is kind of a bummer, but I can live with that. Let's go ahead and put Skyhammer over here, because I feel like if we kill this thing, we may be able to get some loot out of it that we can use for alchemy. Yeah, go ahead and put a shield on yourself, because you've got a lot of missing health, and I don't know what this guy's going to do. I don't want to go too wild and crazy with my fatigue this early on in the fight. We can do a refresh on him and get away with it. And we did get a triangle out of the deal, so I'll take that. But we'll probably want to wait and see till next turn. I don't know what this guy's going to do. He may put like a pox or something on us. Yeah, he put a disease on us right there, but that's okay. We should be able... Oh, I forgot about the environmental effects. So, like, there's environmental effects in this game. So if you're fighting in a fungal bog, like, every turn, everybody, including the enemies, will take, like, one disease damage, basically. Like, I forgot about that. If it's, like, in a blizzard, everybody will take a frost token every turn. I totally forgot about that. But it is a thing that I very much like about this game, in fact, that it takes into account environmental effects when you're in combat. Let's go ahead and recycle over here. There's our other triangle, so let's kill this bad boy. Dude, that ding noise it makes when you ready an active spell, I swear to God, that's the exact same noise that my washing machine makes. So every time I hear it, my ears prick up, and I'm like, ooh, warm undies. Like, every single time, dude. So no loot gained, actually. So we actually need to figure out how we get loot out of those guys. However, there is food up here, and we need food, so I'm going to aggressively go after the food. Uh, there's another critter right there, so I guess when you scare them away, they don't die on the map. Cool. Good to know. I'm going to scout around a little bit. Is that my quest right there? Is that what that is? Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's a chapter marker. Gotcha. 
How do I put her in, coach? That's what I want to do. Oh, she starts off with two wounds already. If she takes another wound, she dies. So she's very fragile. Okay. Good to know. Very, very good to know. Yeah, that's a nice thing to be aware of. Let's go ahead and cook up some dinner real fast because this meter is not looking great. That bought us about another five turns. So as of right now, we've got about eight turns, nine turns to play around with before we're hungry again. And we'll want to alleviate our hunger situation before then. Yeah, let's put her in. I see no reason not to put her in for right now. He's, like, really, really wounded, and we can only have three active mages at a time, so... I feel like it's a solid choice. I am looking around for the mushrooms. I want to make some potions, dude. Oh, there's a cart up here. Let's go see if it's got any goodies in it. Four of those guys? Man, that's a lot of baddies. Mm, we found something new up there, too. I'm assuming that's an alchemy reagent. All right, these parts look like they came from a wheeled cage where mages are kept in back in the Empire, which begs the question, why is the Inquisition in the Wildlands? Let's pick up these supplies first. We've got just enough movement to do it. This is it. We've got the supplies. We are relieved. How can we help you now? You said something about being in pain. Our power is dwindling. This happens after our pro... after prolonged slumber. I'm assuming that's a typo right there. You can help us acquire more. There is a magic node on an island not too far away from here. What do we do when we get there? You must tame it. Once you do, we can bring you to your new home. Oh, maybe we get to like maybe we get to like work out of the spire. That'd be kind of cool. And, like upgrade it and stuff. I'd be down for that. I love upgrading wizardy towers. That sounds like a good time to me. What is that? Bull rushes right there. Two more enemies over here. I don't know if they're going to attack me, but it does look pretty hostile over here. Yeah, there's a lot of bad guys. I'm going to take my chances and roll the dice. We'll jump this guy real fast. I'd like to try to burn one to see if we get anything from burning them. Unfortunately, we don't appear to have gotten really great dice for a strong opening turn. So there's a good chance here I'm going to have to... What spells do you have before I say that? You have Wall of Fire. Might as well get that thing going. I mean, we've got two of the pieces right here. So I'd say slot those in. I mean, this will wipe everything on the map. I don't know if we've got anything else going for us. Uh, we did have a shield spell around here somewhere. I don't know if one of these guys has it or not. Uh, he's got weakened will. I could run one of them off right now to minimize the amount of damage we might take. Oh, he drew another fire. Well, that's good. Okay, so we're most of the way done right there. I don't know if I want to scare one off or not. Um, we just need a triangle. Oh, dude, I feel like I'm playing really badly right now. I did this the last time I played the game, too, where I hyper-focused too much on getting one spell cast done. Yeah, that was awesome. I'll take that. Absolutely. Oh, wait. I got something. Hold on. I clicked through it too fast. What did I get? I got a thing. What did I get? All right. So we've got a foul drop, so that cures you of being diseased. That right there gets rid of you having wounds, so that's really, really good. That's a refreshing brew, so that fixes your stamina, which is great. That's a giggler egg right there. I'm assuming that's either food or... It's not food, it's an alchemical component. Yeah, brew it. What did we get? Oh, so it made us another foul drop. Okay. Well, at least we know how to cure disease now. I love little experimental things like this, and I think that's what I find so intoxicating about this game. 
is that like I really really like how many weird and cool ideas they have in here and how experimental the game is where like you don't know all the recipes from the beginning you don't know this you don't know that you're kind of piecing things together there's a lot of resource management and survival that goes into it and then it's also a game that focuses on mages we don't get that very often like there's always like a fighter a ranger a thief a bard like we have these archetypes but you never get stories like this where it's like a caravan of mages on their way to do some great deed that only mages can do and like mundane people can't assist with and so far like I like the game you know what I mean there's like little delays on the UI and whatnot when you click that could be cleaned up a little bit I love the art style I really really like the the appearance of the world and how everything functions um I, I do think they could punch up the sound effects a little bit better just to make the game a tad more immersive and enjoyable, but I really like the combat system. I like the combat system, like, a lot. Like, the combat system is really cool, and it's, like, really fun to play around with. Now that we know we don't get anything from putting fire on these guys, I don't think there's any reason not to just spam fear spells at them. Like, that's just the way that I kind of feel about it. And so, like, we don't get anything for burning. Well, I guess we got that Giggler egg, but, like, that could just be a random drop. Yeah, it looks like we just got one for making him run away, too, dude. We scared him off so hard that he pooped himself. He done pooped out an egg. It's an excellent resolution. And there you go. Easy peasy fight. I'll take my Giggler egg so that I can cure diseases a little bit better. They ran away. Did I get the thing that was on the ground right there? Because really, I wanted the thing that was on the ground. I did get the thing that was on the ground, so that's good. I'm not super sure where we're trying to go right now. Uh, it looks like right there is the ping that they're giving us. I'm kind of desperate for food, though, so I'm trying to pick together some kind of sustenance that we can have. Broken moon in the realm of death. It is followed by the season of the maiden. As the party rests for the night, a scream brings everyone awake. One of the mages had a nightmare. As the fire is rekindled and the conversation begins, it turns out that not one but each of the mages had the nightmare, except for the wild mage. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I just wanted to test my powers with lucid dreaming. Don't you ever crawl into my head again. Uh, we'll calm down. Mistakes happen. She needs to learn. The mages brew tea and talk to her. After a time, the tension is gone and everything promises to be all right in the future. She's new, man. Like, what are you going to do? Be mad at her? You know what I mean? Nobody's ever trained her to be a wizard. All right. I'm out of time. But this is Spire of Sorcery. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this develops. Like, I do not think that this will ever be a game that has, like, mass market appeal and that people are, like, super into. But I do think that there is a specific sort of 4X survival RPG mage fan arcane audience that would definitely be into this game. Just be forewarned that it's in early access and they have been making some fairly large structural changes to the way that the game works based on public feedback because their initial release did not go so well. And so there is a chance that things will change wildly during the course of its development. But aside from that, I like it. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, Spire of Sorcery. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. It's time for me to go, but I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, but for right now, I'm all tapped out on the contents. Bye, everybody.